Wisdom in a Coffee Shop in Mebane, North Carolina. This is Daily Dose of Daryl Viewer's Digest, May 9th through May 15th, 2022, all seven days in one package. Remember, open the information section, and you can see where to click to fast forward to any day. We also have QR codes for the website and the Motivation Bureau Daily Dose. Meet Dr. Barnsley Brown. You'll be excited to get to know her in this episode from People's Motivation Bureau. Monday Magic, the real magic's in our heart. Get to know new people like Dr. Barnsley Brown. Great, okay. So I am a native North Carolinian. Unlike so many people, I was born in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Grew up in Raleigh. Uh, Went off to school to Wake Forest and to University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Came back to UNC, did my PhD. Boy, this is the fast version. (laughs) And uh, started my own business. I I taught at UNC and at um, Duke for a summer, and I taught at Wake Forest before I decided in the year 2000 to start my own business, Spirited Solutions, professional speaking and coaching. So I can't believe this, but I've been in business over 21 years, almost 22 years, 21 and a half now. Um, And I love what I do. I help spiritual women who are in business to double, triple, quadruple or more their income and their impact in the world and we do it fast with fun we have a lot of fun but I believe in Daryl I think you're the same way I believe in um, that the more money we have the more we can share and I also believe that it's very important for women to have our own purse strings so that if we're ever in any kind of situation that is toxic whether it be like a, a, a work situation or it's a marriage or whatever we can we can leave and we can take our children and we can go, you know? Or we can stay and suggest that that person go elsewhere, right? We invite them to go elsewhere. But I think this is very important. And more women are starting businesses now than men in the United States. Um, Because I think, you know, we've realized that we can't, you know, that we want the glass ceiling to be our own glass ceiling that we can break ourselves. You know, we don't want to work under somebody else's glass ceiling. And actually, we break up all the glass ceilings in my mastermind. (laughs) We figure out what are the limiting beliefs and the limiting activities and strategies that people are using that are not working in their business. And that's why folks do stuff so quickly in there. Tuesday Truth. What triggered you to make changes in your life? I I love that. You know, okay, so it's, it's an interesting story. Um, I had done my dissertation on African-American women's drama. I had published most of it in books and in the best journals in my field before I even graduated with my PhD. But when I went for job interviews, Daryl, I would have people say things to me. Can I be blunt? Like, how do you as a white person teach African-American literature? And I would reply things like this. Well, I find it very interesting that you assume that I'm white. And then I would just continue to talk about my expertise. Because guess what? You didn't have to be British to teach Shakespeare. Correct? Yeah. And you didn't have to be, you know, Mexican to teach a Mexican author. You didn't have to be, um, you know, it was was a way of ghettoizing the literature that I loved and the, the social issues that I love. I realized I was really... I was a renegade, that might surprise you. Uh, one of my coaches said, Barnsley, recently, you're, you are a maverick. And I said, yeah, you're right. And I was then, but academia, truthfully, academia was not ready for that. And I didn't want to have to kiss people's rear ends, Daryl, I'll be clear. So I decided on a particular day, I had gotten the tenure track offer of my dreams, right? And also the guy who I'd been involved with who had left the relationship on the same day they asked me to join this faculty and he showed up at my door saying oh i miss you and guess what i said no to both (laughs) i did i said no to both it was not an easy thing i did not have a backup 
and I started my business with a thousand bucks. I just said, I don't have anything else to lose. Let me start a business. You know, I want to be in business. I, I don't want to have to bow to other people. I want to make, I want to do things according to my values, right? And so, <laughs> and so I remember just um, going to the gym across the street from my house for like three months and literally going in there and crying on the treadmill, Daryl. I'm serious, I would just cry about the guy, about my fear, you know, I'm starting this business and I don't have a backup. I started with a thousand bucks, and can I say this, I know you're a preacher, you're a tired preacher, but I started with a thousand bucks and a lot of boobs, not a lot of balls, because that did not apply to me. Seriously, that's how I started and I became profitable from the first quarter. And the reason that I do what I do now is because at that time it took me over a decade to become a six-figure business, all right? And the reason it did is because I tried to do everything on my own. I tried the cheap way, right? I don't want any other woman to go through that. And that's why I do what I do. Because they can quickly, quickly in that year that we have together, get it together and monetize what they love doing and what God put them here to do. Wednesday Wisdom. Is the Bible valuable even for non-Christians? Absolutely, because it's a historical text, too. I mean, it's just interesting. <laughs> I mean, point blank, it's just interesting. And You know, when I did my master's in Edinburgh, I, I had this idea. This is, this is so long ago. I hadn't thought about this in a long time. The mystical experiences. This is what I wrote about. The mystical experience and silences in the modernist and postmodernist text. Okay, that's what I was writing about, silences. <laughs> Very interesting. But one of the things that I did is I read a lot of different mystical traditions. So I looked at some of the Christian mystics and read some of their stuff, and I read different mystics and Sufi mystics and different mystics from different traditions, and I agree with you about that. I can read the Quran and I can find some value in there. Even though I was raised Christian, I can read it and I can find principles that I can apply to life. I can read um, uh, different, different, I can read Buddhist literature. In fact, one of my favorite authors died recently and that is Thich Nhat Hanh. I loved his works. His book on anger is phenomenal and I'm very attracted to the um, philosophical nature of Buddhism, right? And so I, I read that as well and I can excerpt, you know, truth. And the same for the Bible. Though that was how I was raised. You know, I was raised Presbyterian and uh, I went to youth group. That was one of the things that got me through my childhood, I'll tell you, was going to youth group and it made me who I am. Um, so I, I'm with you. You know, I think that so many, so many wars are fought in the name of religion, and religion is man-made. Religion is man-made. Now, spirituality is not. Spirituality is the path that Buddha walked. Spirituality is the path that Jesus walked. And actually, if you study Buddha and Jesus, they did a lot of the same thing. So I have to believe, this is me, I have to believe that the face of God may be different in different cultures, right? The face of God may be different. And as we know, God was darker skinned. You know, God was not a Aryan. He was, he was dark skinned. He was Middle Eastern, right? I mean, Jesus. I don't mean God. I mean, Jesus. So there's a lot that we get to um, challenge in religion. And I also believe, you know, just to say as a woman, I believe that... Uh, if we truly are made in the image of God, and I do believe that, then God has to be way beyond male and female. Way beyond. Because I'm, I'm a woman, and I'm in the image of God. You're a man, you're in the image of God. And every human being is, is the image of God, right? The face of God. Absolutely. Holy, yeah, no. Holy Spirit comes, and I, I call them God bumps. Yeah. I think too many people want to uh, put God in a box and check off all the check marks and think, well, now I've got it. And God is a living being right? and, and a, a creator. And so God didn't say, well, I created, now I'm done. Right. You know, he created the earth and the people and everything, but he continues to create in our spirits yes. and our lives if we're open to what God has for us. Exactly. Now, These things and even greater things shall you do. 
it's so very clear. Um, and I like to say in some of my presentations, I'm like, well, guess what? Has anybody noticed that Jesus isn't on the planet right now? All right, so who are the hands of that energy? We are. We're the hands of that. We are the hands of that love and kindness or not, you know. Thursday Thrill. Cherish fun and family and adventure. Yes, that was Machu Picchu in Peru. And funny thing was, um, I had always wanted to go to Machu Picchu from the moment I saw the, the picture of it. You know, I just thought, wow, I, I need to go to this place. I didn't know much about it. And then I found a little bit about it. The funny thing was, this was before I ever married a Peruvian, right? And I ended up marrying a Peruvian and divorcing a Peruvian. But my daughter is half Peruvian and half domestic short hair, as I am. And so we have traveled many times to Peru. And one of the coolest things that happens when I go to Peru is there is a place in Lima called Ogar Ermelinda Carrera. And it is like, an, it's like a cross between a mental institution and a juvenile delinquent home, Daryl. It's... Um, girls from like ages 12 to 18 at 18 they get emancipated but 12 to 17 who have been abused some of them have been sexually abused some of them have been physically abused and it's run by nuns and it's been there for over a hundred years over a hundred years they have run this place um, and the nuns are awesome sister Maria Estella I love her um, but if you can imagine, it's these big walls, and at the top are all these broken bottles, right, to keep the girls from getting out. Um, and it's in Lima. Um, so when I go to Peru, I have always taught volunteer teaching Reiki, which is a method of natural stress relief. It's like a system for the laying on of hands that's talked about in the Bible and 1 Corinthians. And I have taught them taught a small group of the leaders, the ones who were able to take it, right? Because a lot of the girls um, really have to be, there's a lot of rehabilitation that has to happen after all the traumas that they've endured. But um, I love doing that. And then on one of these trips, guess what? I went with my sister-in-law and we went to Machu Picchu too. And it, it was phenomenal. You know, they don't know exactly why the ruins are there. There are a lot of theories about it, but nobody's sure. And it really is one of these, the most amazing places I've been in the world. That's one of my hobbies. That's what I love. I love improv comedy. And that, on the, that picture there is uh, one of the performances we did after one of the performances we did at the Seymour Center, the Seymour Sen Senior Center in um, Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. <laughs> and I love improv comedy. And in fact, this is funny, during COVID, uh, the theater that I was performing in, in, in a troupe, you know, um, it got shut down, right? Everything got shut down and they actually, it was sad. This theater um, was allied with a theater in New York City, actually. But of course they couldn't make it and it got shut down. And so I found a theater company in um, Charlotte, North Carolina called Queen City Comedy. Somehow they came across my frame of, you know, my radar and I started taking some Zoom improv classes. And so I've been, and they have global people, so I've been performing in their shows, gosh, for the last few months, and there are people from all over, like we have people from the Philippines, from Austria, from um, Canada, from the United States. Uh, it's pretty, pretty freaking amazing. And I really thought, I, I didn't think I would enjoy the Zoom improv, but there's some really neat things you can do on video. Yes, I have a daughter, she's 15, and she also has taken improv classes, and she's, she is actually, this summer, she, lo she loves dancing, but she left it for a while, she kind of got bored with it, but she's going back to the American Dance Festival Studios, and she's going to be in a couple of the teenage camps this summer dancing again, so I'm really happy about that, because COVID has been very hard on her. You know, yesterday, I, you know, I was working from home and she had a teacher work day. And she's like, Mom, don't you get tired of being at home? And I said, no, honey, I really enjoy it. And she's like, I said, do you get tired? And she's like, uh-huh. Dance is one of her passions. And, you know, one of the coolest things that she got to do is she got to perform at DPAC at the Durham Performing Arts Center. 
and this was with Globalis. They're a modern dance company that comes to the American Dance Festival, which, you know, is a huge festival, one of the biggest in the nation, and maybe the world, too, actually. People come from all over, and she got to do a summer camp with Globalis called the Shadow Camp, and they had this um, scrim, and they would do all these cool things that, it was amazing. Friday flashback. How do you continue to learn and share? Do you have any books we could read? Yes. Well, you definitely don't want to read them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on my website, I have an ebook that is How to Overcome Overwhelm in Seven Easy Steps, and anybody can get it. Daryl, it's at spirited solutions, so S P I R I T E D dash solutions with an S on the end dot com. Make sure you put the dash or you will get a boring, boring computer company. All right. <laughs> put the dash, people. So um, that one's available free for anybody. And you'll also, with it, you'll get a complimentary subscription to my email newsletter. And, you know, something cool I'm doing, Daryl, is I have started having some uh, gatherings <laughs> where I give a business, short business presentation, and then we talk and I do some coaching with people, and I just do that free. I've also done some healing stuff on Zoom where we get together and we, we essentially meditate together. And so those things, you know, when people are on the mailing list, they'll get information, they can come free. It doesn't matter where you are, you can be anywhere. As long as you have a computer or a smartphone, you can get in the Zoom room. So I'm really enjoying that part of connecting internationally now with people nationally and internationally, it's really cool. That's been a real benefit of COVID, I think, to realize that we have a global community. So that one's available free. Then I also have a book, two book and audio package, which is Get Out of Debt, Get On With Your Life, Every Woman's Guide to Create Prosperity with What You Have Now. And what I'll say about that is that the reason most people don't have prosperity is they don't align their spending of their time, energy, money, and focus, i.e. focus and love, they don't align it with their values. And so they're essentially just having drains on their energy, time, money, and focus. They're scattered. They don't have enough money. And so in that, the, this book package is different because there's a lot that I talk about. I quote from the Bible. Um, I talk about it. So if you like the Bible, you know, it's, you don't have to like the Bible to read it, but I do quote from the Bible. And uh, there are a lot of affirmations that I also include at the end of the book so that people can use those uh, to change their mindset. And it includes strategies that you can do, such as how to pay off your mortgage really fast in like half the time or less. So it's very practical, but it also has the mindset stuff in it, Daryl, because you and I both know if I could sit here and I could tell you all the strategy of how you could do X, Y, Z, you know, how you can save money on your insurance or how you can travel the world frugally, and I do put that stuff in the book, by the way, but you aren't going to do any of it unless we, you have the mindset that you're deserving of that, unless you have the mindset that it's possible and that, in fact, divine spirit, source, God, whatever name you call it, that, that loving spirit, that, that that spirit, that source, God wants you to have abundance. And so, so much of what I talk about in the book is the mindset piece, too. And there are two different books. One's Moral Mindset, and one is 50 Nifty Strategies to Prosper Right Now. And it also has an audio I recorded with a friend of mine. Uh, Dr. Suzanne Gaddis, and it's the top three ways to prosper in the life of your dreams. So that's something people can listen to in their car or, um, you know, whenever. I, I have some people who say they listen to it over and over. Final words of wisdom. Sum it all up for us. <laughs> I love that. Just sum up your life. 56 years in <laughs> 10 seconds. No, here's, here's what I would say to everybody. And, and really just... I hope you listen to this with your heart. You are the answer to someone's prayer. All right? That's what I would say to you. You, yes you, are the answer to someone's prayer. And that I mean that in every sense of the word, in your work, in who you are, how you show up in the world, 
who your friends, everyone around you, you are the answer to someone's prayer. We never know exactly who that person is, but they'll be put in front of us if we're willing. So just remember that you're the answer to someone's prayer, today and every day. Saturday Summary Saturday Summary Monday Magic Get to know new people like Dr. Barnsley Brown. Tuesday Truth Be willing to make changes in your life, even if it involves pain. Wednesday Wisdom Seek and be open to God's wisdom at all times in your own life. Thursday Thrill Cherish fun and family and be open to new adventures. Friday Flashback Continue to learn and share with others every day. You are the answer to someone's prayer. Yes, you. Even share this daily dose with them also. Sunday Silence. What new person have you met this week who has brought you a new perspective about life? Pause and reflect. What have you done this week to allow changes to take place in your own life? Pause and reflect. In what ways have you been seeking and remaining open to God's wisdom this week? Pause and reflect. In what new ways have you cherished fun, family, and new adventures this week? Pause and reflect. How have you continued to learn this week, and how are you sharing that knowledge with others? Pause and reflect. This is Daryl R. Peoples, the man behind the microphone. In fact, at the Peoples Motivation Bureau, we do things positive, professional, and quite personal. Three divisions. Check them all out and see how I might be able to help you. We have locally ordered books, and we can get them online. Contact me directly for special deals. Also, this particular book is already starting to help change lives. Group discounts for local churches and pastors. I appreciate you. Keep those ideas coming and your encouragement. These other areas, I can also help you with these, and these are my contact points. This is Daily Dose of Daryl, and I'm responding to the free and gracious gift of God. I'm using humor. The Art of Illusion, Modern Technology, and Decades of Serving God and Communities to work every day to uncover the beauty in all people and experiences coming my way, endeavoring to educate, entertain, and inspire. Each dose on this channel can help move us toward a better, healthier, and more informed mind, body, and spirit. I'm excited to be a small part of the expanding of our capacity to learn, love, and forgive, and together leave this world a better place for all. God bless you.